Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at calorimetry. We're going to talk about what calorimetry actually is, the use of temperature change in specific heat capacity to find the enthalpy change of a reaction, and a run through of an actual calorimetry experiment to find the enthalpy of combustion of ethanol. Enthalpy and enthalpy change have been covered in separate videos. Check the links in the description below. Before we talk in detail about calorimetry, there are a few essential ideas you need to be comfortable with. Enthalpy is the heat content or thermal energy store of a substance or system. All molecules and substances have thermal energy stored up inside them, as when some of their stored energy is released, it can only flow out in the form of heat. Enthalpy change is defined as heat energy change, kilojoules per mole, measured at constant pressure. It is impossible to know the exact enthalpy of a substance. It is possible, however, to measure how the enthalpy of a substance changes when it reacts. This means in chemistry, we work with enthalpy changes, shown as delta H, rather than total enthalpy values. Exothermic reactions describe reactions where energy is released overall by the reacting particles making the products formed lower in energy and more stable, but increasing the heat content and temperature of the surroundings. These reactions have a negative enthalpy change as the amount of thermal energy stored up inside the products is less than in the reactants. Endothermic reactions are when energy is absorbed by reacting particles, making the products formed higher in energy and less stable, but decreasing the heat content and temperature of the surroundings. These reactions have a positive enthalpy change, as the amount of thermal energy stored up inside the products is more than in the reactants. Temperature is a measure of the heat content of a system. It is effectively measuring the average kinetic energy of particles within it. The higher the temperature, the hotter the object, and the more the particles in it are vibrating and moving. Temperature in chemistry is often measured in Kelvin, as this scale directly links the value of temperature to the energy content of a substance. Temperature changes can more easily and conveniently be measured in degrees Celsius, as a change in one degree Celsius is the same as a change in one Kelvin. Recap done, let's go. Calorimetry is a technique that enables us to determine the enthalpy change that occurs during a reaction by measuring how the temperature of its surroundings changes. When a reaction occurs, heat is exchanged between the reacting particles in a system and their surroundings. By surroundings here, we mean any particle or substance around the reacting particles that isn't involved in the reaction. For example, water molecules in a reacting solution. If the reacting particles release heat energy overall during a reaction, this energy will flow into the surroundings and cause the temperature of the surroundings to increase. An exothermic reaction. If the reacting particles absorb energy overall during the reaction, this energy has flowed from the surroundings to the particles, and now the surroundings have less energy, and this causes the surroundings temperature to decrease. An endothermic reaction. How much the surrounding temperature changes is based on how much heat has flowed in or out of the reacting particles, and is therefore based on the enthalpy change of the reaction. It is the temperature of the surroundings that we are interested in when working with calorimetry. Temperature is related to the energy of an object. The higher its temperature, the more energy it has. The problem is that the amount and type of substance being heated has a big impact on how much its temperature changes when it's given a certain amount of energy. Imagine giving a small beaker of water the same amount of heat energy as a larger beaker of water. The temperature change will obviously be greater for the smaller beaker. The heat energy increase is shared between a smaller number of particles, and this means the temperature increases much faster compared to the larger beaker of water, where the extra heat energy is shared between a much larger number of particles. Equally, if we gave 10 grams of water and 10 grams of copper the same amount of extra energy, the temperature of the 10 grams of copper would increase much more than the 10 grams of water. 
Because of this, if we want to use the temperature change of a reaction's surroundings to find enthalpy change, the amount and type of surroundings has to be considered. To do this, we use specific heat capacity. The specific heat capacity of a substance refers to the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of the substance by one degree Celsius. For example, the specific heat capacity of water is 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. So, if we gave one gram of water 4.18 joules worth of extra energy, its temperature would rise by one degree Celsius. If we gave two grams worth of water the same amount of energy though, its temperature would now only rise by 0.5 degrees Celsius, as you are trying to heat double the amount of water with the same amount of energy. Different substances have different specific heat capacities. With calorimetry, it is vital we know the mass of the surroundings, how much it changes temperature, and its specific heat capacity. Combining all these things together gives us an equation. Change in thermal energy equals mass times specific heat capacity times temperature change, or delta E equals mc delta T. It is essential you realize here that the mass, specific heat capacity, and temperature change are all for the surrounding substance of a reaction. The reaction itself isn't really important yet at all. This equation is only being used to measure the energy change of the reaction's surroundings. The energy change calculated may be in joules or kilojoules, depending on the units of specific heat capacity used. A common area of confusion and lost marks for students is that they use the mass of the reactants as the mass in this equation, rather than the mass of surroundings. Don't fall into that trap. Once the energy change of the surroundings has been found, we can turn our attention to the actual reaction taking place in order to find its enthalpy change. The units of enthalpy change are kilojoules per mole, meaning to convert the energy change measured using calorimetry, kilojoules or joules, to enthalpy change, kilojoules per mole, we have to divide the energy change by the moles of reactants in the reaction. Let's look at an actual example of a calorimetry experiment finding the enthalpy of combustion of ethanol. To carry out this experiment, we're going to need an alcohol burner filled with ethanol, a container with a known mass or volume of water in, a thermometer, and a balance. In this example, we are using a container of water as the reaction surroundings. As the ethanol combusts and releases energy, this energy will flow into the container of water and increase its temperature. The container being used to hold the water is called a calorimeter, as it's made of a highly conductive metal, in this case copper, and it's very thin, meaning as much energy as possible will flow into the water from the combustion reaction. By measuring the change in temperature of the water, we can find out how much energy has been released by the ethanol combusting. We can then compare this to the number of moles of ethanol that combusted to find a value for the enthalpy change per mole of ethanol combusting. Enthalpy of combustion. We need to know the exact mass of water that will be heated. You can just use a given volume of water, for example 100 cm cubed, and assume this to be 100 grams, as the density of water is 1 gram per cm cubed. Just to try and make things a bit more accurate for our method, we will zero a balance with the empty calorimeter, then add approximately 100 cm cubed of water and record the new mass, giving us the exact amount of water that will be heated in the calorimeter. In this case, 100.32 grams. To find the moles of ethanol that combust, we will use the change in mass of the ethanol burner. As the ethanol is combusted, there will be less ethanol left in the burner and its mass will go down. By measuring the mass of the ethanol burner before and then after the process, we can find the mass of ethanol that must have combusted and use this to find the moles. The starting mass of the ethanol burner here is 221.48 grams. We also need to record the temperature of the water before it is heated in this case 14 degrees Celsius. The ethanol burner is lighted and then it's a question of waiting for the temperature of the water to rise. 
We don't want to let the temperature of the water get too high as then the water is more likely to evaporate, changing the mass of water being heated in the calorimeter. In this case, we've allowed the water to reach 63 degrees Celsius before stopping any further combustion of ethanol. If the final temperature of the water is 63 degrees and the initial temperature of the water was 14 degrees, the water temperature changed by 49 degrees Celsius. At 63 minus 14 equals 49. To find the mass of ethanol used to heat the water, we need to record the mass of the ethanol burner again, immediately after the flame is extinguished. The reading here is 220.76 grams. The initial mass of the ethanol burner was 221.48 grams, given a mass decrease of 0.72 grams. We can assume that this means 0.72 grams of ethanol combusted. We now have all the information we need to calculate the enthalpy of combustion. First, we need to find the energy that the water in the calorimeter absorbed. This will tell us how much energy the combusting ethanol released. Remember, change in energy equals mass times specific heat capacity times temperature change. The mass of the water being heated was 100.32 grams. The specific heat capacity of water is 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius, and the temperature change was 49 degrees Celsius. Times all this together, and the energy absorbed by the water was 20,547.5 joules or 20.5475 kilojoules, as one kilojoule equals a thousand joules. To find enthalpy change, we need to know the energy change per mole of ethanol that was combusted. At this point, we know that 20.5475 kilojoules of energy was released, but we don't know how many moles of ethanol combusted to release that amount of energy. Moles equals mass divided by MR. Mass of ethanol that reacted was 0.72 grams, and the MR of ethanol is 46, given 0.0156 moles. This means we now know that 0.0156 moles of ethanol were combusted and released 20.5475 kilojoules of energy. To convert this to kilojoules per mole, all we need to do is divide the energy change value by the moles of ethanol that reacted. In this case, 20.5475 divided by 0.0156, giving us an enthalpy change of minus 1313 kilojoules per mole. This tells us that for every one mole of ethanol that combusts, 1313 kilojoules of energy will be released. The enthalpy change is negative as the process is exothermic and energy was released. Surprise, surprise, if we compare this value to the actual enthalpy of combustion for ethanol, minus 1,367 kilojoules per mole, it is lower. And although my poor laboratory skills may be partly to blame, it is more because this process, although easy and convenient, has massive sources of error. Large amounts of energy released by the ethanol combustion didn't even go to the water, they'd have been lost to the air particles around the water container. And then, to make things worse, as the water and calorimeter itself was getting heated, it would have lost some of that energy to its own surrounding air particles as well. Insulating the side of the container, as well as using a shield around the burner, can all help minimise this energy loss. But in reality, the measured value will nearly always be lower than the actual value as not all of the energy released by the reaction will end up heating the water. The conditions we used also weren't standard. Please see the video on standard enthalpy changes if you're unsure about standard conditions and enthalpy. Check the links in the description below. So, to summarise. Calorimetry is an experimental technique used to find heat energy change for a reaction or process. During a reaction, energy is transferred between the reacting particles and the surroundings in the form of heat. By measuring the change in temperature of a reaction's surroundings and using the mass of surroundings and its specific heat capacity, this amount of energy transfer can be found and the energy change of the reaction determined. Change in energy equals mass times specific heat capacity times change in temperature, 
or delta E equals MC delta T. It is essential to remember all of these values, mass, specific heat capacity, and temperature all refer to the surroundings. Enthalpy change can be found by comparing the heat energy change to the moles of reactant used. To convert kilojoules to kilojoules per mole, divide the heat energy change that occurred by the moles of reactant used. Values obtained from calorimetry, especially in a classroom setting, are often lower than the actual energy changes occurring due to heat loss and an incomplete transfer of all heat from the reaction to the surroundings being measured. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.